My name is Brendan Smith, I am the Brewing Sailor, and this is another Hangover Free Review. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Hangover Free Reviews. I'm your host, the brewing sailor, Brendan Smith. And whether you're trying to cut back on your alcohol or live in a sober lifestyle, you've come to the right place because this is the show that helps you moderate your booze, not your brews. Today, we have a very interesting show. It's the first time I'm ever grading a beer a drain pour. So I'm not actually going to show you the, the can yet. I'm going to keep it a surprise till the end. Um, but we are going to go over the BJCP style review why it's a drain pour, uh, and hopefully we'll go, we'll revisit this beer again in a few months and see if it's still a drain pour or if I just got a bad batch and maybe they were affected by something. Who knows? Uh, I always, anytime I grade a beer badly, I always like to give the feedback of why I graded it that way and also promise the brewers that I will revisit the beer at another time to see, hey, was this just a beer that was affected because it was sitting hot on the shelf for a long time? Or is there a pattern here? So I'm always going to give a brewer a second chance. <clears throat> Excuse me. For those who may be watching for the first time or need a refresher, we do grade our beers a little bit differently. Uh, we grade them according to the Beer Judge Certification Program or the BJCP. If you're interested in learning more about the BJCP and the gu and style guidelines used to grade the beer, though the link to the style we use today will be in the description of the video. Now, these are the style guidelines that are used at beer festivals all over the world, like the Great American Beer Festival and the World Beer Cup. And what we're doing is we're separating the beers out by style. So we're judging IPAs versus IPAs, stouts versus stouts. It wouldn't necessarily be fair to judge a blonde ale versus, say, a Berliner Weiss, right? So we're trying to keep like beer with like beer, and we have a set style guidelines for each of those styles. The grading itself is spread across five categories. So we've got appearance, where you can earn up to three points, aroma, where you can earn up to 12 points, flavor, which you can earn up to 20, mouthfeel, or how the beer feels on your tongue, that's going to earn you up to five points, and then finally, your overall impression of the beer, which will give you a uh, out of 10 points you can earn. An average beer is a 25 to 30. A 30 to 35 is a good beer. 35 to 40 is a very good beer. A 40 and above is an excellent beer. And a 45 or above is a world-class representation of the style. So 40 and above, you're talking about serious metal contention. 45 and above, you're looking at best in show. Just to give you an idea of what we're doing here. So I'm going to pour this up off screen. We're going to dive in, take a look at it first. See how she smells, how she tastes, what the mouth feels like and give you my overall impression. After we do all that, we will go ahead and, you know, I'll tell you exactly how I feel about the beer and why. While I'm pouring up this beer, this would be a perfect moment for you to like the video. Click on that red subscribe button, turn it gray. Hit the notification bell to let YouTube know that you want to see my videos when they drop. And of course, do leave me a comment before you go. I love to hear what y'all are thinking. Let me know, am I doing a good job, a bad job? Or if there's something that you want to see me review, I did get a, a couple of requests for a few different uh, shows that people want me to do and a couple different beers they want me to review. Those will be coming up in the next few weeks. Okay, let me pour up this beer. Okay, so this is a hazy IPA. And because of that, we're going to be using BJC pot, the, good Lord, BJCP style 21C, the hazy IPA. So for appearance, we're looking for it to be hazy, obviously. We are looking for it to be uh, yellowish to orange in color and to have a nice thick white head. And we do have all three of those things here. RIP Collective Brewing. Great little brewery, sour, funky brewery that used to be out of Fort Worth. Uh, but yeah, so we do have some nice opacity. It's, it, you know, it's obviously not see-through. It's pretty hazy. Uh, it is more of the yellowish color than orange, but there's some hints of orange in there. Um, and it has a nice thick, moosey head. So yeah, three points out of three on appearance. 
Let's see how she smells. And this is where we run into a problem. Have you ever opened a beer, especially an IPA, and you smelled garlic or onions? That's what I'm getting here. And there's a couple of different things that can cause that. Um, some hops are, are known that if they have, if you get a bad batch, they can cause a garlicky, garlicky onion smell if you put too much in, in the uh, bittering hop. Other hops, uh, if you leave the beer, if you leave, I should say, if you leave the dry hop, like on a hazy IPA like this, if you leave the dry hop on the beer for too long, those hops can break down in the beer and give off off flavors that very much resemble garlic and onion. Now, I'd like to think that we're not talking about incompetent brewers here and that they just got a bad batch of hops and then that was exacerbated by being shipped out, distributed, sitting on a hot shelf in total wine for God knows how long. I'd like to think that. And so that's what we're going to go with, because I'm not going to just going to automatically assume that the brewers don't know what they're doing. So we're going to assume for the moment that it's just a bad batch of hops. There are other causes, but those are the two most likely ones, and we're going to be getting into the weeds if I go any further. So we're just going to stick with that. It's a bad batch of hops. I'm going to try this beer again in about six months to see if we, we got a pattern forming here or if it really just was a bad batch of hops. But as for a score on aroma, two out of 12. Um, I can get some citrusy and tropical notes there. And especially if I just do a, a quick whiff, I get that citrus. But if I really stick my nose in there and get some deep breaths into it, all I'm getting is garlic and onion. All right, two out of 12 on that. Let's see how she tastes. Um, there's really nothing remarkable there. Um, the garlic and onion is still present, not as bad as it is in the aroma. Um, but it's still there. There's a little bit of citrusy hop, um, but there's not much from the malts. There's some sweetness. But it's pretty bland. It is not, uh, this is not a, a hazy IPA to write home about. Um, yeah, I, I really actually don't want any more of that. We're going to give that a 6 out of 20. I'll give them that they used the right grain bill, but they didn't get much out of it. There's um, There's some sweetness. I, I, there's not really much accompanying bittering. I mean, I know hazy IPAs aren't as bitter as West Coast, but I'd expect a little more bittering. I, I'm finding it difficult to find anything really positive to say about it. It's it's just kind of there. Um, if the most remarkable thing about it is the garlic and onion, which is not really saying much. The mouthfeel, so six out of twenty on on the flavor. The mouthfeel is fine. It's a medium mouthfeel, medium carb. It's a smooth carb. It's not a harsh carb, so it fits the style very well. That's a five out of five. Overall, like I, like I said, I don't know if it's bad hops or bad brewing, but this was not a good batch. Um, we're going to err to the side that it was probably bad hops. I, I just don't like to assume that my fellow brewers aren't doing their job properly. Um, but this was not a good beer. It's getting a three out of a ten. An overall score of 19 out of 50. Not the best. So what beer was it? Well, if you're playing at home and you guessed Strive IPA, Juicy IPA, you would be correct. Here's the interesting thing about Strive. I can't find a damn thing about it other than the fact that they sell it at Total Wine. So I'm guessing this is contract brewed for Total Wine, much like Penn's Best is by Genesee, uh, Genesee Cream Ale. Um, so 
I don't know. I know it's brewed in Stratford, Connecticut. I know there's only a certain amount of breweries in Stratford, Connecticut. But um, yeah, this was not great. Um, for me, it's a drain pour. Uh, uh, the rest of this beer is going in the kitchen sink as soon as I stand up from this review. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll have a place where I can, you know, maybe have a bucket to pour it into so you can see me pour it out. But that is not the case right now. So my first drain pour, Strive IPA. Whoever brews this, I'm very sorry you have to watch that and see me tear it apart like that. But I like garlic and onion and Italian food, um, even Tex-Mex food. I don't want it in my beer. So that's all I've really got. Uh, it is a drain pour. I would, you know, I'll buy this again in six months and see if it's any better. And if it is great, and I will certainly report that back to my viewers. If it's not, I will report that as well. If it's the same experience, you'll get that same answer from me. So we'll see it in December strive. And hopefully you do better by then. If not, oh, well. Um, and if anybody knows who actually is brewing strive, hit me up, shoot me a message, either leave it in the comments or you know, fire off something to me at uh, any of my social medias. They're all linked on my YouTube channel. You can find them, Instagram, Facebook, Untapped, Twitter, yada, yada, yada. So before we go, I did mention that I had a few requests. Uh, so I had a request for somebody who wanted me to review Athletic Free Wave. Uh, so that will be coming up. We're going to do that early July. Also had a request for me to go over the different types of non-alcoholic brewing. And while I'm happy to do that, I think first it's important we set a baseline on how we actually brew beer, not just non-alcoholic beer. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos where I explain how I come up with my recipes and then how we homebrew beer. And then once I've set up that, then we are going to get into the breakdown of the different ways you can turn either brewed beer into non-alcoholic beer or just brew non-alcoholic beer straight up, which is what I do. Uh, and then we will also be putting together a video of an actual brew day, both an alcoholic and a non-alcoholic brew day, so you guys can see the differences in the two processes that we use. That's going to take some time to put together. Um, some of the initial ones, you know, how I make a recipe and, and all that are just a walkthrough of the different styles. That's not going to take that long. I should probably have those out in July and August. The video of the actual brew processes themselves, those will probably take till the end of August just because there's a lot of video editing that has to go into that. Um, I'm also going to film multiple brew days so we get the best bits. Um, it's going to be hot as hell when we're brewing because we're brewing outside in the summer in Texas, but say la vie. So something to look forward to, but we are going to break down the differences between brewing alcoholic beer and non-alcoholic beer. And you're going to see not only the theory, but how we put those into practice as well. Uh, so something to look forward to through July, August, and possibly even into early September. If you guys have any other ideas or suggestions of things you want to see me do or th beers you want to see me review, of course, like I said, you can leave a comment below. We do love your comments. The YouTube algorithm loves them. You can always hit me up on any of my social medias. As for today, before you go, like I said, leave a comment. Hit that like button. Turn that subscribe button from red to gray because Lord knows we need your help. I got I, maybe 40, 50% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So that would really make my day if you guys all hit the subscribe button for me today. And of course, do ring that notification bell, let YouTube know you actually want to see my videos. Everybody, thanks so much for the support. I really love that you come back and watch me every week. It really is the highlight of my week. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And we will see you next time on Hangover Free Reviews, where we are going to be reviewing another athletic beer. We're going to be reviewing. Re <laughs> yeah. That's all, folks. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Uh, sorry about that. We will be reviewing Geralt's Gold from Athletic Brewing, of course, the Witcher beer. So if you're a fan of Henry Cable, you're a fan of the Witcher series, the Witcher games or books, come check it out. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on Hangover Free Reviews.